This is problem number three from section 5.1. It says, using rectangles whose height is given by the value of the function at the midpoint of the rectangle's base, estimate the area under the graph using first two and then four rectangles. They give us a cubic and they say it's between zero and one. Now the key word in that whole thing is the midpoint of the rectangle's base. So in previous problems, we've, uh, we've done obviously our estimations with two and four rectangles, but we did lower sum uh, estimations, which lower sum means we are essentially using the left side of our rectangle, our lowest side, to, uh, um, as, our, as our, uh, basically our height. So the left side was going to be the height of the rectangle, and, then we, and that would be an underestimation. And then our right side uh, estimations, where we use the right side, was our overestimations. Now they want us to use the midpoint. So the only thing that changes here is how we draw the rectangles. We're going to draw the graph first. And we've got a cubic, so we know that uh, when we plug in 0, 0 cubed is 0, and we plug in 1, 1 cubed is 1. So we can go ahead and draw uh, one here and one here and we can show what the graph looks like which you can see with uh, with a basically a, a cubic on this side of the on the basically in quadrant one it looks sort of like a quadratic here so uh, you've got zero when we plugged in you got one when we plugged in here we want to split this uh, into uh, two rectangles. So we're going to split this into rectangles of e equal width. So we have 0.5. Each rectangle, rectangle 1, is going to have uh, a width of half, and rectangle 2 is going to have a width of half. And what we want to do here is we want to use the height. So the height is the given value of the function at the midpoint of the rectangle's base. So before we would uh, if we did a lower estimate, we would take this rectangle two and we would use its left side as our height. And so our rectangle would stay below the curve. And then this other rectangle would basically be just a flat line. Uh, it wouldn't even be a rectangle, it would just be a flat line with area zero. And so our, our estimation for the area would be, um, it would be a much smaller than the actual area. Or we would do an, uh, an upper sum estimation where instead of using the left side, we'd use the right side and we'd go all the way up till we touch the function and our height for that triangle would be much too large, right? You could see we would be covering extra area. This one would be much too large and we'd get an overestimation. So when we did the lower sum, we'd get a, a low estimation. We do the upper sum, we get a high estimation. So the midpoint is supposed to give us a better estimation because now instead of using the left and the right sides of the rectangle, they want us to use the midpoint of the rectangles. So the midpoint of the rectangle now is going to be height. So I go up to where I touch that function and I draw my rectangles off of that. And what you see here is... Uh, we're going to be, let's draw this one here first before I say. We're going to be missing some areas. You can see that we're missing a little area here that we're not including, but we're kind of gaining it on the other side because we're adding extra area. We're missing some area here, but we're gaining some here. So it's going to be a little bit better estimation than the lower and the upper sums. Now this is for two rectangles. Let's go ahead and draw the graph for uh, four rectangles. So this will be for four racks. That graph would look like this here. And I'm making it a little larger because we gotta split this a little bit more. So this is zero, zero again. This is one and one. And so, a little bit of a zoomed in view I suppose. We're going to split this in half and then split each of these into a half and you can see 
And this problem, the left side with the two rectangles, we had rectangle one, we're gonna have rectangle two. But on this problem, we'll have rectangle uh, one, two, three, and four. So four rectangles. But we gotta use the midpoint, so we're gonna actually need to know uh, these values here. That's 0.875. And if we go up till we touch that line at that spot, draw our rectangle. Now we have our rectangle using the midpoint. This is 0.625. And this is 0.375. And this is point one two five. We know point one two five. That's just an eighth, three eighths, five eighths, seven eighths. So uh, this is what the four rectangles using the midpoint, uh, the midpoint of the rectangles base as the height. And you can see the two graphs. Um, they're going to give us a better estimate because. If you notice all the areas that we're missing, right, in these corners, we're kind of making up for it by adding in a little extra area on the other side. All right, now once we have like all this drawn out, we just need to go through and start finding the areas for each individual rectangle. So let's focus on the two rectangle version first, get an answer there. So we can say rectangle one, I know that it's, uh, its width is 0.25. No, its width is uh, 0.5, sorry. So its width is 0.5. And its height is, well, it's gonna be F of 0.25, whatever this, uh, this output is for uh, 0.25, uh, that, would be, um, that would be its height. So I'm gonna say 0.5, and I'm gonna say times f of 0.25 and that's going to be what my area is so my area is going to equal 0.5 times let's go ahead and uh, write these out I'm gonna write these on the right side here f of 0.25 what's f of 0.25 if I plug in 0.25 and I cube it and I get 1 over 64 so this is 0.5 times 1 over 64, which is, uh, that'd be 1 half times 1 over 64, which is 1 over 128. Rectangle 2. Again, I have 0.5 as my, uh, my width, so I'm just going to write that as 1 half times f of 0.75. is going to be, that's going to be my area, so I'm going to say area equals one half times uh, f of 0.75, plug in 0.75, and we're cubing it, we get 27 over 64. So we get 27 over 64 here, which is 27 over 128. So I have my area for rectangle one, I have my area for rectangle two, now I just need to find uh, the total area under the curve. So I say total area, and remember this is for under curve, that would be one over 128, plus 27 over 128, which is uh, 28 over 128, and 28 over 128, if we divide them both by four, it reduces to seven over 32. So for two rectangles, we get, a, uh, we get an area of seven over 32 for our area under the curve. Now let's look at what four rectangles would be. 
Well, now we're going to use, instead of using a width of a half, we got widths of 0.25 here. So I'm just gonna label area here, rectangle one. So rectangle one, we've got uh, one fourth as its width, or 0.25, and we're gonna multiply that times f of 0.125. That says five right there. So f of 0.125. Well, we need to figure out what, what's f of 0.125. So this will give you point one two five. We're gonna do cubed one over five twelve. So we end up with one fourth uh, times one over five twelve, and one fourth times one over five twelve. 1 over 2048. Okay. Now the area for rectangle 2 is going to be, again, 1 fourth times F of 0.375. So we're going to figure out what F of 0.375 is. Go ahead and plug 0.375, we're gonna cube it. 27 over 512. So we end up with 1 fourth times 27 over 512, which is gonna give you 27 over 2048. All right, so let's go area of rectangle three. Again, one fourth is its width for rectangle three, 0 0.5 to 0 0.75. And then we want to take it times F of the height, which is the input of 0.625, whatever the Y value is there, that would be our height. So we get one fourth and then we do F of 0 0.625. 0.625 cubed 125 over 512. So the height here with an input of 0.625 was 125 over 512. Multiply those, you get 125 over 2048. And then now we do the area of rectangle four. And that'll be one fourth times f of 0.875. So we do f of 0.875. We have 343 over 512. So we have 1 fourth times 343 over 512, which is 343 over 2048. So our total area under the curve would be 1 over 2048 plus 27 over 2048 plus 125 over 2048 plus 343 over 2048. And all that's going to equal 1 divided by 2048 
Well, let's just add the tops. Let's go 1 plus 27 plus 125 plus 343, 496 over 2048, which reduces to, let's see if it reduces, it should, they're both even. So divided by 2048, we get 31 over 128. And so this is a slightly better estimate than the 7 over 32. If we look at those decimal values, uh, the decimal value for 31 over uh, 128 was 0 0.24, so it's close to uh, a quarter, basically. And if I do 7 divided by 32, it's just a little bit farther, uh, farther away from 0.25. And I don't know that 0.25 is the area, but you can see that this is going to get us, this is getting us slightly closer to that area, inching us closer.